Once a year, we organize an Element Optics team building getaway in some far flung corner of the world to hang out, strategize for the year ahead, and test new products. In 2022, with the development of our hunting scopes, the Helix HD and Helix HDLR, I've persuaded the team to head to South Africa and I've organized a planes game hunt. The plan is to get a different species of antelope for each shooter and to film everything for the Element Optics Global Hunting Series. This episode turned out awesome and you can watch it using the link down below in the video description. But in this video on this channel, we're going to go a step further and show you some of the behind the scenes footage, including some air gun hunting for monkeys and dussies, some thermal hunting for hares using the Pulsar Thermion, and some scenes from our road trip along the garden route to the beautiful city of Cape Town. And it all begins on the 1st of November 2022 when Shane's flight pulls into the airport. Well, the Element Optics gathering in South Africa is finally happening. I've just pulled into the airport here in Port Elizabeth to pick up Shane Keller. We're going to hang out a bit. Tomorrow we'll pick up the Swedes and then we're, we're off to uh, off on a hunting adventure. Hey! <laughs> That's a great man. Yeah, long, long journey. It wasn't as bad as I expected. Yeah, it's not too bad. Shane spent a day enjoying the beach life and recovering from jet lag. And the following day we headed back to the airport to pick up Henrik and Johan. It was time to leave the coast and head inland towards the Wittmorskloof Oxwagen camp where we'd be hunting over the next couple days. We arrived after sunset to find the fires lit and the beers cold. So we finally made it. We made it to our hunting spot. It's been a long couple days. Started in Arizona. To New Jersey, New Jersey to Johannesburg. Spent the night in Johannesburg. Woke up in the morning, flew to Port Elizabeth where I met Matt. Was able to spend the spend the day with Matt, get a good night's rest, and then this morning or this afternoon we picked up Johan and Henrik from Sweden. Got in the car, about a three-hour drive from Port Elizabeth, and we're here. Got a nice cold beer sitting in, right here in front of the fire pit. And excited, uh, excited to wake up early tomorrow and, and get at it. I knew if I did, I'd have to start all. Over. Tonight we have our dinner catered for by Anton and Kutsia of Oxwagon Hunting Safaris, who will also be guiding us on our hunt tomorrow. This is also a working sheep farm, which can only mean one thing: some of the best lamb you'll ever taste in your life. So this is some lamb. And there's some venison sausage. More that. After a long few days of travel, you'd expect everyone to be exhausted, but we've got other plans as we prepare to head out and try get something down with the thermal. So we are heading out right now uh, with the thermal, with 26 grain slugs out the little impact. We're just going to take a quick drive to see if we can find some some hairs. Uh, the hairs are pretty tasty. Um, we probably won't eat them ourselves, but the farm workers here would love to love to eat them, so they definitely wouldn't go to waste. And provides an awesome opportunity for us to not only just play around with this thermal for a bit, but also just take uh, Henrik and Shane out for a species that they don't get where they're from. A Karoo scrub hair. Where's, my, where's the tear? Yeah. I'm <laughs> showing <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>, on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Torn my shorts, my favorite shorts, my only, sh well, the only pants I'll ever wear, basically. <laughs> nice, made a nice big hole in them, so it means I'm going to have to do some more clothes shopping when I get home. Buy another one. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'll be your eyes in the sky. <laughs> oh, yeah? Do you I have, have that? I have, like, built-in night vision. This isn't just a hunt, it's also a game drive. These fallow deer are pretty rare to see in this area, especially during the day, but we spot a pair in the road and get to test the pulsar thermal on them. You can see the heat from the summer sun still radiating off the rocks in the background, but the scope is picking up the deer nicely. Oh, yeah, it does. Look, look up there, thing. Up to the right. 
We eventually spot our first hare and Shane manages to put in a good shot from around 50 meters. First kill out here in South Africa. Good old Impact M3 with the Pulsar thermal. We're driving in and this little guy ran across, picked him up on the thermal and jumped from about, I don't know, 30 yards maybe. But 22 uh, Impact is job. That's cool. Let's go do some more. You see some more activity up ahead and it's a little daker, one of South Africa's small antelope species. We're enjoying just watching these antelope and playing around with the pulsar, but out of nowhere, another hare appears and Henrik gets his chance. Oh yeah. I managed to get in and focus and hit record as well. Good. <laughs> that was good. Nice. All right, nice. There it is. That's nice. Yeah, first one of the hunt. It's nice, first evening. Feels gonna be a lot more. All right, let's bring this home. We could have just said, if you shoot your first species of buck, let's say if you shoot your spring buck, your base buck, could do whatever. It is traditional to eat the balls or the liver? I'll take the liver. So do you guys do the same thing? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of guys will. Not everybody, but there's a lot of tradition like that. No, most most of our South African traditions is to take the testicle and okay. eat a piece of it all, the whole whole one of it. Raw? Raw. Okay. Just like you shot it, congratulations, and they cut it out. And all right. <laughs> Henry could do that for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, <laughs> I, I'll rather take that than the liver because I, I can't eat liver. It's I'm not that bad I'm taste. The only thing I'm going to shoot tomorrow is baboons. <laughs> <laughs> no, whoa, well, it's worse. Yeah. We spot a whole herd of springbuck on the hillside and this is one of the species that we'll be hunting tomorrow, so it's good to see them out in numbers. Yeah, that's good news for tomorrow. Gotta keep, a, keep our eyes open. There you go. You gonna stay here and watch them all night so we know where to go? <laughs> yeah, sure I can do that. <laughs> sure. We wake up just before sunrise to the allure of coffee and watch the dassies running around on the mountains while we wait for the caffeine to kick in. This whole trip will be about testing the Helix HDLR in real hunting conditions and analyzing the design, optical performance and mechanical reliability. Well, we had a very early morning this morning, got up around 5 o'clock, a little bit chilly, um, surprisingly chilly for November actually. Um, but we're just kind of preparing for the day's hunt. Obviously, we've got the Cenofar rifles that we're going to be um, using to get some antelope species. Still not quite sure yet what we're going to take, but uh, we'll make those decisions on the trot. But um, we might get some opportunities as well on small game. So we just want to do a quick zero check on the on the air rifle, which has the new element Theos on. So yeah, this trip's very much for testing purposes and we're gonna try, spend a lot of time with the Theos, with the Helix HD LR and the Helix HD and maybe a few prototype things which we won't show you, but um, should be pretty exciting. Let's see where we are. Our antelope hunt will take place up in the mountains where it's a little bit easier to spot herds of animals and plan a stalk. But on our way there, we have the impact and the 22250 ready just in case we spot some monkeys on the way. And sure enough, they are out and about. We spot a troop hiding in the trees at around 300 meters, and we all think that this gray rock at the base of the tree is a monkey. So we tell Henrik to take the shot and. Oh, wait, that's not a monkey. <laughs> anyway, enough wasting time. Up the mountain we go. Let's get hunting. We spot some animals on the way up, including some kudu and some warthog, but not wanting to settle for a pig or a kudu cow when we could get a nice trophy, we decide to pass on these and keep going.
Halfway up the mountain, we spot exactly what we're looking for, a herd of mountain reedbuck. We stop to glass and see if we can spot a ram in the group. There is a ram, but the herd bolts up and over the horizon, so we decide to stop and put on a stalk. We make our way to the top of the hill and hope that we can spot them on the opposite side. These rocks may provide a really good place for us to rest the rifle for a shot, and if not, we have the tripod. No chance of a prone shot from up here. Just as we hoped, the herd is spotted just a few hundred meters below us, and Johan is able to find a nice flat rock to rest on. I leave the scope cam thinking that I've got the shot on camera but unfortunately end up just following the wrong animal and miss the shot. The shot is enough to kill him but he bolts down the mountain and we find ourselves having to walk a long way down, stopping every few meters to glass and try to spot him. He could have gone anywhere and blends in so well with the grass and rocks here that we could easily walk right past him without even knowing it. The Helix HCLR ends up being a really useful tool for glassing around with the 2 to 16 magnification range and HD glass giving us really good clarity and a very versatile zoom range. It's been a long recovery process and we've walked over 6 kilometers on foot but we eventually find him and we're all very happy to be able to tick Johan's animal off the list. Hello, we're out here hunting Mountain Rebook in South Africa, an amazing place on the Oxwagon series. Uh, this is a typical animal for this area and it's a perfect specimen. We're only here hunting for one day, uh, so we're really happy we're able to find this animal and get it down. Oh, that's good. That's good awesome. Good. Yep. Got him. That's get some water. <laughs> yeah, it felt like we were never going to get him for a while there, so yeah, happy was, we got him. That was awesome. That was cool to watch the whole thing by binoculars. <sighs> we still have two more animals to get today, and the sun keeps beating down hotter and hotter. So we climb straight back into the truck and head further up the mountain in an attempt to get something for Shane before lunchtime. We spot a herd of wildebeest and contemplate whether or not to shoot one, but they look like they're on the move and we aren't too keen to risk a long shot in the wind on one of these tough animals. We walk further along the plateau, stopping every now and again to peek over the hill and look around, and eventually we find what we're looking for. A herd of impala with some nice rams in the group. We need to find a place to set up where we're within 600 yards and have a stable shooting position, and Shane keeps watching the gap looking for a ram. For a moment he stands up under the tree, perfectly broadside, but we take a little bit too long calculating a firing solution and we miss our chance. They're about 500, 550 yards or meters away. And it took a second to get set up and then we got set up. They just kind of got spooked and got by some thick stuff and went right over the edge. So you win some, you lose some. But that was fun. Adrenaline went, went up, so it's good stuff. With it nearing midday now, we're just about ready to head back down for a lunch break, but we decide to keep moving just a little longer in the hope that we might spot another herd just over the next hill. And we couldn't have scripted it better. Right in the open, just a couple hundred yards away, we find a blessed buck ram standing broadside out in the open by himself. Hey, hey nice. <laughs> nice. Well, that happened quick. That was uh, that was amazing. That was that was really cool. Look at this guy. Wow. 
absolutely amazing. Nice shot. Well, my first kill in South Africa. Congratulations. That was amazing. I hope you enjoyed awesome it. Awesome job. Well, well shot. Everything well done. Beautiful back. That's so cool. We got up to the bus buck here and noticed the uh, exit wound hadn't quite made it all the way through. Cut out the bullet right here, which is really neat. We'll flip it over and see the quartering shot. It uh, hit it right above uh, the forearm and looked like a good shot and it went down quick. All right, so we've been out here all day, about lunchtime, and uh, thought about heading back, but instead we said, let's go drive up the road and make one more pass. And about five minutes later, we saw this guy. And we got out of the truck, put a stock on him, got it downwind from him, and got set up, 250 yard shot, uh, broadside. He didn't go but 20 yards and dropped. Uh, so it was a real great experience, happened so quick, but uh, it was just amazing to see it all come through. And one thing I like to do with our optics, uh, before we put them uh, you know, out for the public and put them in mass production, we get a lot of the prototypes and then put them in the field like we are doing today. So this model is the HDLR uh, with the capped low profile windage turret, and then it still has the uh, uh, exposed elevation turret. So. It's great, you know, it's a great scope for, you know, situations like this where you might have a 100 yard shot, you might have a five, 600 yard shot. So you can dial it in precisely. He was in some thick covers, so I needed as much fill the view as I could get. So I had the scope turned down to two, three power, found the, found the animal, was able to turn my magnification up to, you know, about the 12, 14 range and really dial in, make sure the shot placement was right and took a deep breath, exhaled, and pulled the trigger, and it uh, and everything happened like it was supposed to. Very pleased with the way it performed. I dialed it uh, from 100 to 250, and it uh, it performed like it should. Time for a well-earned lunch, and we head down the mountain again, spotting plenty more animals on the way. We'll put the hunting on pause for the next few hours while we wait for it to cool down, and hit it hard again later. Well, we're just taking a bit of a lunch break here at the at the Oxwagon camp. Um, it's really nice to sit down. We've had a, a long morning. We've had all had a little bit of sunburn and a uh, little bit of heat stroke, I'd say. So we're very, very tired, but yeah, we'll take a break. We'll have something cool to drink, have lunch, and then um, probably head out at 2 p.m. or so. And um, hopefully by then it's cooler. I see it's a little bit overcast now, so hopefully it brings the temperature down a bit. In the next episode, we'll carry on where we left off on this one. Setting out some gongs at long range to play around a bit and test the HDLR and kiosk some more before heading out to get Henrik and Animal just as the light starts to disappear. Of course, you may have already seen this in the Element Optics Global Hunting Series, but what you won't have seen is some of the monkey and dussy hunting from the following morning. It was awesome to see these guys get monkey fever for the first time. Subscribe to Elms Hunting SA to stay notified, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.